Okay, so we are going to be doing a uh, tutorial here. We're going to be making a Pong video, but there are a couple things I want to show you first. Uh, so let's open up Flash. We're going to open up an Action Script 3 file, and we're going to create a little animation of a ball bouncing. Now, because this is our sort of first introduction to Flash, I want to run through a couple of things. Uh, first of all, this is your toolbar. Okay, we've uh, seen similar things in Photoshop and Illustrator and some other Adobe software. We've also got palettes here. I'm going to have you reset your uh, environment by clicking this Essentials and then clicking uh, Reset Essentials. That's going to set it so that everything on your screen looks the same as mine. Now I prefer to have my toolbox over here. Okay, you can, you can set yours up any way you like, but just be aware that mine's over here. Uh, this is the interface I like. Okay, this is our stage. This is where everything happens. So if you put this in uh, the same terms as your uh, flipbook that we made, this would be page one of your flipbook. Currently, we only have one page. We've just got this here. But if we added more pages, they would show up on your timeline, which is this right here. Our toolbox, we're not going to talk about everything, but a couple things I want to uh, sort of draw your attention to. We're going to be creating a couple of shapes. Flash has got this little drawing um, object icon here. I want to make sure that this is off. Okay, if you hit uh, J on your keyboard, which happens sometimes by accident, it turns it on. I want to make sure that that's off. Same thing if I'm using any of the other tools. I want this turned off. Okay, it shows up for line as well. Um, all right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, animate a ball bouncing. So I want to show you a couple of things. First thing I need to do is create my, my ball. So I'm going to drag out a ball. If I hold shift, It'll constrain it to a circle, and that's what I want. I'm going to go to my Move tool, which is V on my keyboard, or select the tool. If I click and I drag away that shape, you'll notice it leaves the outline. I don't want that, so I'm going to undo that. If I did the same thing by selecting the outline and dragging that away, it would pick up the outline and would leave the shape. I don't want that. I want them both. So just like you've seen in other programs like SketchUp, if I double click, it selects both together. I want them to come together because I'm going to turn them into a library item. It's called a symbol. I'm going to right click and say convert to symbol. I'm going to rename this to be ball. There are a couple of options here. For now, we want graphic. We're going to leave it as it is on graphic and we hit OK. That's going to show up now in my library. What you'll see is that ball item shows up in my library, which means I can drag out more copies of this okay, if I needed to. I don't right now, so I'm going to delete them. Uh, but just so you know, that's where that is. Let's go back to our properties. Okay, I'm going to make a bouncing ball. I want this ball to sort of start here and then bounce and then bounce back up. So if I was doing this in a flip book, I would have my first page, which is this page, and I would have the ball set up, you know, roughly near the top of its sort of arc and probably centered. So I'm going to align it to the center of my screen, which is right there. All right, I want this to bounce over, say, Say this is going to happen over 40 frames. So by the end of this, I want it to be on frame 40. I want it to have bounced and come back up. But I want at 20, halfway through, I want it to be down here. So I've got to insert a keyframe, insert keyframe. And you'll see that now Flash says, okay, we've now got 20 pages. These pages are identical in my, they're, they're called frames here, but I'm using our analogy of a flip book. So you made a flipbook with a ball that moves from top to bottom. We've now got 20 pages or 20 frames in which this ball is in the same spot. Okay, it'd be, it'd be like drawing a, a flipbook where your ball doesn't move, which would be a weird thing to do. But anyways, here we are. I want this to be on frame 20. I want it to have bounced gone all the way down. So I'm going to hold shift and drag down. Shift just means that it'll stay in the same place. If I let go of shift, it can I can drag it away. But if I hold shift, it's going to stay in the same um, vertical plane, or I could go across or on diagonal. It'll stay by holding shift, it constrains it to uh, an even number like 45 or 90. All right, I want it to go down to here. Okay, and now what you'll see is it starts up on frame one, it stays here the whole time until it gets to frame 20. Now I don't want that. I want it to I want it to smoothly move between this first position and second position. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say create classic tween. So as long as I'm anywhere between the first and last, you'll see that Flash does the math and draws in those in between the stages. Okay? So if I test my movie, what you'll see here is it goes from here 
to here, 20 frames or 20 pages in the flipbook from the top position to the bottom position. Okay, great. I want it to return to the top position, so I want over 40 frames again. I'm going to click here. I'm going to right click and say insert keyframe. Great. So now my animation starts on page one. Over the course of 20 pages, it moves down to here. And then it stays here because I haven't changed the final position. I haven't changed this. This is the same position as this was because I just inserted a keyframe and Flash just extended, extended out those pages. So this is here. Fine. What do I do now? Well, I need to change it so that it's back up here. Well, I could guess and hold shift and sort of, I think it was around here. But better than that, I could go back to this frame and find out exactly what these properties are. So if I click on this, notice here on my properties tab, right now it's showing me the frame. Up here it says frame properties because I've currently clicked on a frame. But if I click on this orange ball, you'll see that it changes and the properties are now giving me the, the properties. It's context. Um, contextual menu. It's giving me the properties for the thing that I just selected. If I click on the white, it's going to give me the properties for the stage. It's a white stage, it's 550 pixels wide, it's 400 pixels high. If I click on the ball, it gives me the details for this. Alright, I'm going to continue here over top of the announcement that we have. Um, I want to set this uh, ball in the last frame to be the same as the height, the x and y position of the first frame. So I click on this ball, my x is 240.75 and my y is 23. If I go here and I click on the ball, my x is 240.75, that's good, but my y is 331. Now like what I said before, I could drag this up and guess, but it's better to go here, get this exact property, which is 23, come back to this frame, click here and make that 23 and now it's in exactly the same position so when it returns when this loops the keep this animation keep looping this will be in the exact same position at the end as it was at the beginning so that that loop will be nice and, and uh, steady great I'm going to right click here and say create classic tween and now this ball is going to bounce from here and back up to here if I test this movie command enter on my keyboard you can see that it's moving evenly between the first and the last frame. And what's happening is it's going 1 to 20 to 40 and back to 1 to 20 to 40 and back to 1. And so this looks okay. It doesn't look like it looks like it's moving, not bouncing. We're going to learn something called easing. If I click on this first frame here and you look up on the properties for the frame, okay? It says ease is 0. If I drag this to the left, What's going to happen is it's going to change. Actually, let me put it back to zero to make this point. Right now, each step of this frame, the ball moves the same distance. Right, Each step of this, at the beginning and the end, it moves the same amount each time. Okay, So when I test this movie, it's evenly spaced between those uh, steps, those frames. So it, it moves at a constant pace. If I change this to minus 100 and then test my movie, what you'll see is it changes speed. At the beginning, this is a very small step, a small step, slightly slightly bigger, slightly bigger, until the end here, these are actually quite big steps. Okay, so what's happening, that's a big jump. Whereas here, it's a very small, almost not noticeable jump. But what happens as we view this in something called persistence, persistence of motion, our eye wants to make sense of this, or our brain wants to make sense of what we see. And so it, it fills in the blanks and assumes that this motion is constant, but slower at the beginning, and it makes it look like it's falling faster. So I can do the same thing here by making this, instead of minus 100, I'm going to go the other way and go plus 100. What that's going to do is it's going to make it faster at the beginning and slower at the end. So we have minus 100 ease at this point, plus 100 ease at this point, and that changes the spacing between these so that it's slowly moving at the top and quick at the bottom. When I test my movie, it makes it look as if this is bouncing. Okay? 
Great, so by using that Ease tool, I can now have this animate into position as if it were bouncing and there were some gravity. Okay, by slowing it up at the end of this transition and speeding it as it ends this tra down transition, it makes it look like it's got some gravity. Okay, so stop that right there. And hopefully you can follow along and create a similar animation.